Hi guys, I'm Anissa and I'm back with another video and today it's time for another Monday Reads. I haven't done a Monday Reads in a while because when I get home from work on Mondays it's pretty dark. So I've decided to try and pre-film Monday Reads whenever I can. Um, so this is filmed on Sunday the 10th instead of Monday the 11th. Uh, but it goes up on my channel on Monday so that is still like a Monday Reads. If you will my planning of the week is a little bit different because i plan it now on sundays instead of sunday evening when i usually do my planning i plan it sunday um morning or yeah right today i actually planned it right now so <laughs> it, it 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 differs a little bit my reasons for getting back into this is because i enjoy filming them but i also enjoy the process of planning my week and I haven't done that in a while and I can see it in my way that I'm reading. I don't have very many, I don't read as much as I did um, when I did plan my reading, even unless I've been doing readathons, which like challenges me to read because there's a readathon. Otherwise I've just been a little bit slacking and I don't see it as slacking. I've read four books in seven days, in these 10 days, so it's not terrible. I would have loved to have finished more and two of these books were not on my November TBR. So yeah, anyway, let's get into what I did read, what I finished, and then I'll get into my plans for the next week afterwards. The first thing that I finished uh, over the past week was The An Argumentation of Historians by Jodie Taylor. This is book nine in these Chronicles of St. Mary series, which I have come to love so much. I enjoy the audio so much. They are narrated by Sarah Ram and she's amazing. She does a phenomenal job. In this one, um, Max, our main character, she gets stuck in the past. Oh, well, she's actually first kidnapped and then she makes a deal with someone uh, to not kill her uh, because that was the, the intent that she was supposed to get killed. Um, but somehow she manages to get out of that, but then she's stuck in time back in the, I think, 1500s, and she has no way of getting back. She has no way of contacting anyone. She doesn't have a GPS tracker, so no one can find her. She, no one knows where she is, what time, when she is, if you will. And so this was definitely really interesting. I enjoyed um, her trying to deal in this time period where she was stuck and she had to uh, fit in with the time period and try and not seem too modern um, and try to act as the as women did back then um, so a little bit aloof and not knowing um, things and it was very interesting I really ended up enjoying it it had a bit of a I don't want to say slow start but it took a little bit of a time for me to really get immersed in this one but I definitely end up really enjoying it and I think I'm giving it four and a half stars so I definitely enjoyed it not as much as the previous one but still a really solid read. The next one I read and finished was A Murder in Chinatown by Victoria Thompson book nine. This is also book nine in the Gaslight Mystery series. Um, I started out reading this I read the first half of the book I think in on my ebook and then Giselle from so Bradley contacted me and said that I could borrow um, her overdrive and listen to it that way. So I ended up listening to the, the last half of the book and finished it like that. But I, it was a quick read. I enjoyed it. It was really fun. Um, this one definitely, it's set in Chinatown. So it is, it does explore uh, Chinese culture a lot and how that if that part of the culture um, fared in this time in the 1800s, late 1800s in New York. And it was definitely very interesting. I really enjoyed that talk about that and people trying to fit in into the into being Chinese in New York, but also people trying to fit into New York and being Chinese because a lot of them were supposed to get deported because they were not allowed to be there um, because they were Chinese born. and. Yeah, um, so a lot of them were illegal uh, immigrants at the time, but it was definitely very interesting. I really enjoyed it. Um, it follows the murder of a girl who escapes her fate when she is supposed to be married to a chi wealthy, very wealthy Chinese man, but who's way older than her. She's only, I think she was 18, 16, 18, 
that age group. Um, so she in secret runs off with another man who is Irish and gets married. And then not long after that, she's murdered. And so Sarah has to investigate. Oh, not Sarah. Sarah doesn't have to uh, investigate, but Frank has to investigate. But a lot of these Chinese girls, they come to visit Sarah and ask her opinion and ask her to listen in and she's a good listener so <laughs> yeah i really enjoy these they're so much fun every time and i i'm never disappointed with my reading of them and i gave this one also a four out of five stars as i've done with the previous eight books i think um it was definitely a very entertaining read um the third book that i finished was the child finder by ready delfield denfield this is the last book that i had to read from my mystery part of the genre tbr thing i'm doing um and the mystery section has been terrible i haven't really enjoyed very many of them i think i gave uh the grown-ups four stars and all, all the other ones were three or lower uh so it was very disappointing um and this one uh was interesting in places but i still didn't love it but with this one i think i'm very much in the minority because when i see people I'm friends with on Goodreads. They all seem to have rated it four or five stars. The majority of the people th seem to really enjoy this book. My my reason for not loving this completely is that I felt it was a little off in places. I didn't really connect to the story. Um, it follows a girl who is um, has a knack for finding things and finding people. Uh, when they disappear so if there's a miss missing persons thing then she's going to try and make sure she can find them she just has to go to the place where they disappeared and she can sort of feel some things so it sort of has sort of a magical speculative twist to it it follows like two perspectives in, in this one and the one one of them is from the girl who's abducted in this situation and yeah i don't know I somewhat enjoyed it, but I didn't love it. I ended up giving it three out of five stars. Um, but I'm happy I'm done with the mystery part and I can move on to the romance part, which is the next part of my genre TBR thing. The last and final book that I finished over the past week, um, that I finished just this morning actually, is The Christmas Source and The Winter Witch by Tom Fletcher. This is one of those books that I put into my reading that I just wanted to read because I want to read them. Um, I got this um, in the middle of October, I think, and actually just wanted to pick it up immediately, but I didn't. And I'm happy I sort of waited. I really enjoy this one. Um, it's so magical. Tom Fletcher has, um, I mean, he's writing for the intended audience, which is around the years um, 8 to 10, 11-ish, that age group. Um, so it's not very difficult language, obviously, and he has a way, but he has a way of adding sort of um, more depth to the story as well in sort of little ways that you don't necessarily expect. Um, in this one, uh, we start the prologue actually starts out by showing us a glimpse of the future. So, and the, in the future, Christmas has disappeared. So the book is heavily um, focusing on the fact that maybe what what happens if there's no Christmas and how can we make sure that Christmas is still here in the future and obviously it's William's job this little guy to try and save Christmas so <laughs> it's a really lovely um, adventurous story again and and it has time travel it has uh, the magical fairy tale like things from uh, the, the, the Christmas spirits and there's so many things. Uh, the Christmas source is adorable and all of the illustrations throughout the story are so incredible um, and just gives you a lot of um, happiness and I like the fact that our main character is is, paraly is a paralyzed child so he's in a wheelchair and the fact, the way that Tom writes this character is just really uh, enjoyable to read. Um, he also has a, has lost his mother, which is the reason he's in a wheelchair is because of a car accident that where the mother passed away and he uh, survived but got paralyzed in the accident. Um, but there's obviously a lot of talk 
around Christmas you miss the ones that you that is not there uh, if you've lost someone so obviously there's a lot of talk about how about his relationship to his mother and how he's dealing with the fact that she's not there and just how he just wants one more chance to see her and I just enjoyed it so much. Um, I don't know if I enjoyed it as much as the Christmas stores or if it's just as much. Um, it's difficult for me to uh, tell you um, because I gave the Christmas stores five out of five stars. I'm not sure if I reread it and I would give it again um, or if there's something in the writing that seems a little bit predictable at times um, and a little bit silly, but in the same, on the other hand, it is for another audience. It's intended for another audience. And so I don't, I don't think this sort of silliness needs to be looked down at a negative thing in this, with this book, but I did really enjoy it. And I think I give it a four and a half stars. So very happy I read it. And I'm definitely very much feeling the Christmas spirit now. <laughs> and Tom really is a good is good at getting your Christmas mood up. Um, also because Tom himself is such a big fan of Christmas, so I'm not surprised that he makes a lot of focus on the spirit of Christmas in his books. Um, yeah, enjoyed it a lot. And I read like this much uh, just um, this morning and yesterday so it definitely reads very fast obviously it has large text so it's not like a big really difficult thing to read but um, it's nice when I get through a book this quickly even if it is a kid's story it just feels a little bit more successful <laughs> in your reading now I have to change notebooks because this is the planning one the thing is I bought this really cheap <laughs> And they turn it upside down when they make this uh, marker and stuff. So I basically start from the back. <laughs> but it's okay. I wrote down a couple of goals here and we'll see how things go. Um, first things first, I usually talk about the things that I'm currently reading. And my, then I go into my plans for next week. I'm currently still currently reading uh, Down These Strange Streets by... Uh, which is a short story, oh, an anthology edited together by George R. R. Martin and Garner Dossoir. And I am about halfway through, I'm at 199. And the last story I finished in here was amazing. It was by Laurie King, So I'm even more excited to pick up um, the Sherlock Holmes, Russell, Mary Russell series um, now, because she has such an, an incredible writing style. I have put this down for now until I've sort of finished my November read. So I don't think I'll pick it up again until December, but I have been enjoying getting in a sh story here and there and it's definitely very enjoyable. Which means I also have another book that I haven't talked about, uh, that I haven't written down here, that is also I'm in the middle of, but I won't get to that one either uh, until December at least. But I have 280 pages left of uh, Down These Strange Streets, so a bit of a while to go. Um, but still, I have been enjoying what I've read so far, the majority of it. Another book that I'm currently reading is Angel's Peak by Robin Carr. This is the ninth book in the Virgin River series. And this book follows different couples every time. And in this one, we are following um, a sort of second chance romance. This couple had been together for about two years and then they split up uh, for different reasons. But when they split up, uh, their mother uh, is pregnant with their child, but she doesn't tell him about this. So he doesn't know until the beginning of this, or around the time I am in the book. Now he figures out that he is, um, a father and I hate that I hate that she kept it from him I don't like when when um, stuff like that is kept a secret he is entitled to know that he's a father and he is entitled to know to let her know how much involvement he wants with the kid he can say afterwards he doesn't want anything to do with it fair enough but he needs to know he needs to make a full f a decision about this and so it, it it annoyed me a lot that it was a, such a big focus in the beginning, but I like that it's pretty quick into the 
book and he figures out that he's a dad and sort of that so we can focus on a little bit different things um but yeah uh, that annoys me a little bit but hopefully the remainder of the story will be good and from angel's peak i have about 203 pages left um and the last thing that i'm currently reading is an enchantment of ravens by margaret rogerson uh, this is the one i'm listening to at home when i do stuff so i am about 100 pages into this one i have about 200 pages left um, but i'm planning on getting through quite a chunk of it today uh, because i have a couple of things i need to do here at home after i finish filming um, so i hope that i can definitely uh, make a good progress on this book so yeah so if for the goals over next week, I definitely want to finish the two books that I'm currently listening to, uh, both uh, Angel's Peak and Enchantment of Ravens. I put them down to finish this week. Um, I think I will probably finish Angel's Peak on Tuesday. That's what I'm thinking. And an Enchantment of Ravens will probably uh, be around the same time, maybe. Uh, I don't think I'll have a lot of time listening to, to listen to it tomorrow. So it depends a lot on how much I get through today. The next thing I'm going to pick up is because I'm in a spirit, Christmas spirit now, so I can just as well continue the festivity by reading Hogfather by Terry Pratchett. I'm really looking forward to this one, but I didn't want to have two Christmas books at, going at the same time. So when I finish An Enchantment of Ravens, I'll start on this one. This is almost like 450 pages long, um, but I cannot wait to read this and see how Death Fair as a sort of Santa type character. <laughs> Another book that I would really like to read um, because I would like to have a physical book to read over the over the week and hopefully finish. And the book for this week that I've chosen is A Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Bernard. This is um, my Lala's favorite of the month and it is about 307 pages long and but I'm really looking forward to reading it. I hope I will enjoy it and I hope that it will go fast considering it's uh, contemporary. I, and then I, after I finish Angel's Peaks, I want to pick up another audio and hopefully I'll also finish that one. We will see how much I get through. I put down the whole book as a goal, uh, but we'll see how it lands and how much I get through. Um, but that book is going to be Daisy Jones and the Six by Ter Taylor Jenkins Reid. So it is going to be, and, and this book is about 368 pages, so it's not too bad. It's quite, it's about a four, four and a half to five hour long audio in my speed. So I am figure I could get through it uh, over Wednesday, Thursday and Friday possibly, uh, but I don't know. It depends a lot on how much I get of listening time when I'm at work um, over the next week. But finally, the last thing I've put on to read over the next week is for my, I want to read something that's easy and I don't want to think too much, maybe before bed-ish. <laughs> so I picked up Scott Pilgrim Volume 2. I have to hand it in at the library, I think, next weekend. So I'd like to finish it before then. Um, so this will be my pick for that. And these stories, I really enjoyed the first one, so I hope that I will also enjoy the second. And yeah, so so those were all of the things that I plan on reading uh, over the next week. And in total, that means I need to read 1,723 pages with an average of 246 pages per day. So I really have to get back into my listening and reading groove and see how it all goes. Let me know in the comments down below what you've been reading recently, if you've read any of the books that I've talked about today and what your thoughts were on them. Um, are you going, planning on, have you read any Christmas books recently and which, which ones were your favorite? Do you get into the holiday spirit um as well and do you enjoy reading books that set around the holidays also let me know about that um yeah if you like the video please give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and i'll see you in my next video very very soon goodbye